You're on. Hi, guys. <laughs> I did not get much warning. He just said, you're on. That's it. I'm Here I am. It's been, we've had a great day so far today. Um, today was the annual New Maryland uh, spring water, which is where we live. Uh, we had to do an annual yard sale. Instead of having yard sales all summer long, we have one great big one where everybody in the neighborhood, uh, which is in the spring water half of the village, uh, they set up their yard sales. And we have people come from all over to come out for it. So that was on this morning. So we were set up uh, bright and early for that and uh, got to spend some time chatting with neighbors and with friends. And it was just a lot of fun. You know, you make a little cash, you get rid of some stuff that's been sitting in your storeroom or in your shed or in your garage for far too long. And uh, it goes to somebody else's garage or storeroom <laughs> for far too long. So. Uh, that's why we were about an hour behind today because we would be tearing down and setting up for that. So we had a great morning, lots of fun. It was a beautiful day for it. And uh, we had a lot of people come by. It was great fun. So I got rid of um, quite a few uh, finished pieces that were taking up space in my storeroom and a whole bunch of other stuff that was taking up space in my storeroom. So um, now I've got room for more because, you know, money doesn't buy happiness, but it does buy art supplies. So, which is my thought for the day today. Um, I had one of those weeks this week. Could not paint to save my soul. I couldn't think. I, I don't know. I, that's why I posted asking for your help trying to figure out what to put on the border on the frame for that new piece that I did. And you guys came up with some awesome ideas. And I played around with a lot of them. And it was it was a fun way to uh, kind of pull that piece together a little bit because I really just was not having any success with it. And uh, I had originally planned to paint pears for today and um, I absolutely hated it. <laughs> it was just nothing was working. So um, I thought, you know what, we'll do something uh, easy. We'll do something relaxed. We'll have a little bit of fun. And um, we'll cover a few little things as we go. So we are going to paint Naughty and Nice. I love these. I just think these are so cute and so much fun. And they're easy to paint. And it gives me an opportunity to talk about this. Um, this surface is from Sheila Landry at uh, TollPaintingDesigns.com. I love Sheila's stuff because, one, take it out of the box, paint it. Everything I get from her is so beautifully finished. It's so well sanded. It's nice and smooth. You're ready to paint the minute you get it. It's there's like very little prep, which is really, really nice instead of having to sand something until the cows come home. So it's a pleasure to paint on the surfaces that I get from Sheila. So that's what we're going to do today. But before I let you go, I want to talk about something. Um, on the freebies section on my website there's this pattern go and check this one out this one is a lot of fun this is just a simple uh, give thanks piece free pattern go there and download it great fun to paint uses a stencil it's straightforward it's an easy one and it makes great gifts and you can paint it on almost anything so this is the freebie that's up on the website right now you'll find it in the freebies section um, had a question about the gold leaf pen that I use. That Deco Color uh, Premium or Prime Primo uh, gold paint pen. I love these and right now they're really cheap on Amazon. So if you're looking for them, Amazon.com or Amazon.ca, that's the best place that I found for those. Those ones from are from Marvi Yoshida. And uh, mine, my ultra fine one, um, crapped out on me this week and vomited all over the piece that I was painting. So it was time to replace them. They have these sets on Amazon as well for a really great price. They also have these available on walmart.com. So if you can't find them on Amazon for a reasonable price, check out walmart.com. They have those too. Um, the other thing, Identipens. Yes, I have those up on the website. Um, they're fabulous. You can work uh, if you don't use the gel pen or if you like thicker lines, grab yourself an Identa pen. This is fantastic and I do have these up on the website right now, but they're 
fairly readily available again on Amazon.com. You can also find them on Walmart.com. And so if you're in Canada, stockade.ca carries those Identa pens too. So if you're looking for that type of stuff, that's where you can find them. So for today, we're going to paint Nadia Nice. We're going to do it on this great surface from tollpaintingdesigns.com, which I absolutely love this piece. I have a stash of these because I have plants, um, which gives me an opportunity to talk about something. Um, I have my surfaces already prepped for today, but um, we're going to switch the camera down and we're going to talk about doing, uh, getting these MDF surfaces base coated. Woo! Woo! Yay, my microphone works now. Oh, goody! <laughs> so now you can, not only can you hear me, you can hear him. Okay, here we go. So, um, these are fantastic, these ornaments. Now, and one of the things I love about Sheila's surfaces is the, the care and preparation she takes in getting these to you. Now, this one is a super easy surface to work with. It is cut. Because they're handmade, you, this centerpiece is not interchangeable. So you can't move this one to another frame. It has to go in the one that it came out of. And she marks, see that little registration mark? On the back if you line those two things up you're going to get a perfect fit and then all you have to do is just gently push back and it recesses that ornament it makes it's just such a clever design that works really really well just remember that little registration mark on the back now to prepare MDF for painting MDF is very absorbent and so it'll do some funky things if you just slap water, wet paint on top of it it'll what I call it pilling it creates almost like a, a sandy texture on it like it's got little bumps and if you want to maintain that smooth look then you're going to need a little bit of all-purpose sealer and your base color and I mix my all-purpose sealer you can use decoupage medium the mat uh, there is another brand out there that uh, also works but I prefer using the decorate uh, decoupage or their all-purpose sealer and you mix it one to one so one part acrylic paint to one part sealer and then apply it just as if you were base coating and then let it dry sand it lightly and apply a second coat with the sealer mix let that dry give it a very light sanding and then apply a single coat of just the acrylic paint and you will get a nice, smooth, even finish. You won't get all of that, that little pilling. It won't give you that orange peel uh, texture that you try to avoid. It'll give you a nice, smooth surface. So that's what I recommend for sealing MDF. The other thing, seal everything. The back, the front, all of the edges. Make sure everything gets a good coat and everything gets a light sand. You don't need to be too aggressive with it. You just want to remove any little things that stand up. So that's my suggestion for painting on MDF. So we're going to start with, oh, which one? Let's do nice. Let's do nice. So uh, <laughs> we'll get to the naughty. That's the fun part. Uh Janet Mills is asking if you could repeat the name of the fine tip pens. The fine tip gold leaf pens. Yes, absolutely. It, these are also the deco color, same manufacturer as my other one, but these ones are the ultra fine. And the best place I found these is on Amazon, uh, but you can find them on uh, walmart.com. Right now, I think Amazon had, it, had the better pricing, but it comes with two gold pens and one silver, and this is the extra fine. Works just like this one, but I like this one for signing my pieces and for doing little gold details or metallic details. This is a great pen. So I have... Um, I do need to flip the camera around. Wow. Are we upside down? Uh, give me a second. <laughs> He's got me upside down. There we go. <laughs> wow, I can't believe I didn't notice that. And I can't see it, so <laughs> I couldn't tell you. So I have my uh, my berries. I've got one coat of warm white on here. 
and I've got one coat of warm white on my lettering. Now, the fun part about this particular lettering is it doesn't really have to be perfect, uh, but I do want to get it fairly opaque, like so. Just a little bit of that warm white. I like this project because it really doesn't use a ton of colors, and it's a fun one to do. This would be great on a set of coasters. Would this be fun as a set of coasters without the hole? Without the hole, yeah. Oh my gosh, they would be too cute for words. Great for the holidays. That would be so much fun. I would I would put a rope on it and attach it to a coffee mug. <laughs> yeah. That way you have a coaster wherever you go. Yeah. Oh, that would be cute. Such a, a fun. And this this is a, a very forgiving um, font this type of lettering because it doesn't need to be perfect in fact it's it's more appealing when it isn't I find if it looks like a computer did it it's it kind of loses something uh, so do you base coat the two pieces together I do um, and the reason I do is because now I don't have to glue it together a little bit of that all-purpose sealer just holds oh. everything in place so I don't like gluing things I'm lazy. I don't like gluing things. So I use all-purpose sealer. I brush the edges, push this thing back, and base coat everything. No, it's not a new camera. We just have uh, great natural lighting today. And a new windows in the studio. <laughs> and new windows in the studio. So, yeah, yeah it's just good lighting today. We, we got lucky. Nice yeah, sunny day. It's a nice sunny day, and we've only got one overhead light on. And then one diffused one, so... Yeah, so we've got great lighting today, so it's nice and bright. So it, no, it's not a new camera. <laughs> it's just really good lighting really today. Really good lighting today. So I'm going to, uh, we'll talk about the base colors on this. I've got warm white for all of the berries. Regardless of which one I do, I base coat them all warm white. And there's a reason for it. The berries on the nice are going to be red alert, or your favorite red. Um, I just happen to like Red Alert. And I'm going to use my number two rigger. Oops, sorry, it's not my number two, it's a zero. Um, and I'm going to go over those white berries with a single coat of Red Alert. Now, I base coated them white first because I want the berries to remain nice and bright and this red alert most reds in fact are going to be influenced by the black on that background so I'm putting a nice base of white down so that the berries stay nice and bright are you still planning on doing a video on the angel piece I am we've been a little busy on this end I haven't really had a lot of time for filming lately so um, inundated with work <laughs> inundated with work yeah. I'm not complaining I promise you I'm not complaining uh, but now that I, I have most of my zoom class and one more zoom class to teach this week and I'll have all my zooms done and then I can, uh, I can focus on some other things but um, I can't wait for tomorrow. I'm, I'm painting tomorrow with the Pacific Coast Decorative Painters. Uh, Zoom class with them tomorrow afternoon. I'm very excited about. I mean, it's afternoon for me. It's morning for them. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited about that uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I've never taught this piece. I designed it specifically for this group. So I'm rather excited about that. And um, it also means that I'm releasing two new patterns on Monday. Yay! We've held on to these uh, because this was a, a specific piece for a specific group, so we did not release the pattern. So that will be available on Monday. I'm excited about it because I happen to think they're really cute. <laughs> it's a pretty piece. Oh, Jessica, get, 
killer and can't stay around. Her son just popped in. Ah, well, Jessica, go and enjoy your family. Jessica posted a couple of her pieces the other day. She oh, did yeah. beautiful work. Nice. Oh, I uh, thought you were going away this week. She Next is. Next weekend, I'm going away. Yeah. Yeah. Next weekend. I am. I'm going to get a little time on the beach, a little time away um, with my hubby, which is really nice because we haven't had a chance to get away together for a, quite a while. And I'll be doing security at the Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival. <laughs> yep. And Renee's <laughs> working that weekend. So. Good. I'll be busy. But I'm looking forward to it. It's um, just a weekend away, but it get, means I get a little time at the beach, which I'm happy about. I get to go spend some time in Shediac. I love Shediac. It's a beautiful place. Who will keep Renee in line? Good luck. <laughs> you think I'm in line? <laughs> the only thing Renee stays in line for is a coffee. Yep. I don't do lines. He doesn't do lines. So, I've got one coat of Red Alert on those berries. Yet, sadly, no live this Saturday. No live this Saturday. But we'll make sure that when we come back following Saturday, you're going to have a lot of fun. We'll have something really great for you. Yep. And dinner? <laughs> no food? <laughs> I can cook. He can cook. Yeah, he will be fine. <laughs> I can fill my own gut. He will not starve. No. The He's one... seen my freezer. He knows. He's uh, not oh, I, I know there's fresh bacon in there that just needs to be smoked. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Yeah. I got to do that tomorrow, too. Yeah. Oh, well, then if you're doing it tomorrow, I don't have to smoke it. <laughs> so I'm just going to dry this real quick. And whiskey? I don't drink. He doesn't drink, so. <laughs> and I don't do whiskey. I don't drink anything, I guess, I guess we have to watch, re, watch reruns. Watch reruns, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> well, I got a great cup of tea. I'm good to go. So, we're going to talk about these berries. Now, originally... Um, I'm going to grab my soft black. <laughs> so I've got a little bit of soft black. You can use lamp black if you want to for this. Uh, I'm going to find my small angle. I have a really great little giveaway this week. Oh, do you? I do. Oh. Um, is it tickets to OKC? <laughs> no, it is not tickets to OKC. <laughs> for the uh, painting Palooza? No. No? Unfortunately, I am not going to be at Palooza. Yeah. Um, travel issues uh, coming out of Canada into the U.S. are such uh, that uh, I won't be there this year, which I'm very disappointed about. But um, unfortunately, that is the way of things these days. So I'm trying to find my small. There it is. So giveaway before I got so distracted. You're welcome. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, you see me use these a lot. This is a Dynasty Faux Squirrel angled shader. I usually use the half inch, which is my favorite brush. Uh, I love this Faux Squirrel. So this is probably one of the most expensive brushes that I use uh, because the Faux Squirrel is a higher end bristle, but it's a very good quality. And uh, so I have three Dynasty Faux Squirrel half inch angled shaders to give away and then we've got um, a little set of stencils to go in there as well. So don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Make sure you hit the like button. You'll we'll see that like then go up there and then drop us a comment or a question in the comment section. We're more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. So that is your giveaway this week. It's a Dynasty brush, Dynasty Faux Squirrel half inch angled shader. It's my favorite. My all time favorite. It's funny how the most expensive brush is your all time favorite. I know. <laughs> funny how that works. Yeah. Um, Sandy's telling me that my mic is scratchy and going in and out. What? 
Yeah. So scratchy and in and out. I don't know, maybe just a little interference. Could be that microphone. Yeah. Or it could be me. <laughs> or it could be her. I've been uh, stuffy and coughing most of the morning. I have absolutely no idea why. She's got the Rona. <laughs> Do not have the Rona. <laughs> so I'm going to add a shadow to these berries. And this is a trick to make things look even rounder, is when you start that float, come in from the edge just a little bit, tiny, tiny bit. And I'm just doing like a crescent, a little half moon. And I'm coming in just enough so that there's a little peak of red of that base color showing on the other side. So just a little peak. And <laughs> Rona-ish. Oh, it is. I actually, I think it's an allergy. There's something blowing around out there, so. Because I was fine when I was in the house. And then I went outside. <laughs> I was surprised. Um, big yard sale. I mean, it is a big yard sale. This whole path of the village is, you know, a lot of traffic. And people are still wearing masks and, you know, and keeping a good social distance, which is kind of nice to see, even though we have one of the highest vaccination rates in the country, so we are at nearly at 80% of qualified uh, or eligible people have gotten both doses, so that's awesome. So again, I'm leaving that little space Now, when you do this, um, this helps accentuate the orb. It also makes the berry appear a little translucent. So, there I've got my shading on my berry. I'm going to rinse out that brush, and then we're going to put a highlight on the opposite side of the berry. We're going to do that with a little bit of thinned warm white. I'm going to pull my palette in here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to brush this out really well. I don't want this white full strength, so I'm going to brush that out really, really well. And then the highlight, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to come in slightly from the edge. Using soft black for shading. Yes. Yep. Yep. Using the soft black for the shading. So that highlight is very weak, very thinned, warm white. And it's going to go directly opposite that shading. But again, I'm leaving a small space, very thin edge, like so. I have a little hair. Okay. I'm going to check the audio. Don't mind the sound, it's going to be a... Oh no, she says it's static. Static? Yeah. So I smart this time around, Sandy. I put it put my Apple Watch on. <laughs> so I smart this time around, Sandy. I put it put my Apple Watch on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that... So I smart this time around, Sandy. I put it... I, I hear the static they're talking about. Yeah. Um, that could be one of two things. It could be this. Did that stop it? He's checking it out. Anyway, so when you do that. Did that stop it? <laughs> no, He's it's... checking it out. Anyway, so when you do that, did that stop it? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, that okay. was it. Okay. It was the charger for my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I had so, to plug it in. 
that tiny little float that you put up there, when you give that little bit of edge, it implies that that thing is completely round. So then to make it look really shiny, I'm going to take a tiny dip dot of that warm white. <laughs> no, we're in the tunnel. So a small little dot of white. I'm going just to the right of the center of it. I don't want these perfectly square. So that tiny little dot of white just finishes off that makes it look shiny. Um, you could also do it with a tiny little comma stroke. Personally, I like the little dip dot. It's just a light impact point, but it just gives them a nice glossy appearance. So red berries, super, super easy. So let's talk about the white berries. Now we've got white berries over here. So I have one base coat of warm white on these berries. I'm going to put one more coat on because I want them to be nicely opaque. They don't have to be absolutely perfect, but I do want them to have at least a second coat on there. We want them a little bit brighter. Sounds like a fan running. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the fire. Jeez. It's very humid here right now. Okay. <laughs> He's very clear here. Good. So it's varying from person to person. So I'm just going to quickly put a second coat of white onto these berries so that we can finish these out. Now, I like to shade white berries with blue um, just because I feel it gives them a little coolness. And then when I go back over them with asphaltum, it warms them up a little bit um, and gives them a slight greenish cast. So if you've ever looked at um, the berries on mistletoe, although they're white, you can still see there's like a slight green undertone to them and uh, I kind of want to go with that because I like that tone I like that look and it beats trying to make a green berry look white it's much easier to add a little touch of green or a tint of green to a white berry what size brush um, I'm using a zero rigger to base those in I also used the zero to do this lettering. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. So I'm going to dry these berries real quick. So you can use Bahama Blue for this. It was the charger. Yeah. yeah. I figured. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of um, cobalt teal hue, but Bahama Blue will do the same thing. And I'm going to brush that out so that it's fairly weak. I don't want this color full strength. Pardon me. And remember what I did with these first berries? I came in from the edge slightly. I'm going to do that again with the blue. Of course, I blended it so much I don't have any color left in the brush. There you go. That's as close as I can get without distorting the picture. <laughs> and as long as she just brings it closer to herself a little bit. There, there we, we go. go. So I'm putting that little float of that Bahama Blue, just like I did with the soft black on the red berries. I'm leaving that little space. It doesn't have to be much. 
just that little narrow space. That blue is pretty. It, Bahama blue, I think, is my favorite Decorate Americana color. I know it, it's uh, Sandy's favorite, too, because both of our business cards are the same color. <laughs> our, our Decorate business cards uh, are both Bahama blue on the back. Um, they put our favorite Americana colors on them, and both of us have blue. I love Bahama blue. Yeah, the static's gone. Yeah. It was it's the charger. Yeah. So now I'm going to go over that color, just tone it slightly. I'm going to do that with a small amount of asphaltum. And it's, again, I'm not using the color full strength. I'm going to um, blend this out. I don't want this color too dark. And now I'm going to shade. But I'm going to take that float right out to the edge of the berry just like that now this is a super easy project to do you could do hundreds of these at a time because they really don't take that long to paint once you have your base colors in they they take no time at all so i'm going to I want to deepen mine a little bit there we go. Well, it not quite dark enough to suit me. So I'll give it another quick coat. There we go. So what happens when that asphaltum goes over top of that uh, Bahama blue is it takes on a slight greenish cast, which is really quite pretty on these um, mistletoe berries. I'm going to grab some titanium white because that titanium white is going to be our highlight color. I know I'm highlighting over top of white with white, with more white. But I'm using uh, titanium white because it's a little cooler. And it is going to change the look of this surprisingly. So just like I highlighted on the berry, I'm, this time I'm going to use some titanium white. And I'm going to come right to the up here. Again, leaving that small space. Now, interestingly enough, when you do this, although it's not a, immediately obvious, that float helps diffuse those other colors. So you get a softer transition. It isn't an in-your-face change, but it is subtle, but it is an important one because you are changing the other two colors just slightly. And then we're going to use that same titanium white to put that final impact point onto our berry. I got to fix something there. There we go. And so I'm going to take my, where's my liner? And I'm going to take just a dot of that titanium white. And again, same location, just right of the upper center of each of those berries. I know when you're doing this, it doesn't seem like it's going to have that much of a change, but I'll tell you, if it's not there, it's obvious. So there, we have our highlights in place on our berries. So if I pull that up a little bit, you should be able to see it. So it does. So now we've got these nice little fat, shiny mistletoe berries. And then we're going to um, talk about those leaves. Now, um, I'm going to shade these with plantation pine. I'm going to use a little sap green in my fluid acrylics, but plantation pine will work perfectly. And I'm going to switch my brush over to... Um, I'm going to go over to a 3 8 angle. You can use either the black gold or the faux squirrel. Either one will work just fine for this. And we're going to shade the base of those leaves. Now I'm brushing this out so that I get a really nice... Bring it closer to you. Yeah, I want to brush this out really well so it's not like a solid 
float. I want a nice transition so it's well blended. Pick up this red one. And that float is going to go down here at the base of this leaf. Just like that. So I want it darker down here. Right at the bottom of the leaf. Uh, when I use the Joe Sonia glaze with my brush to shade for highlights, I end up with a shiny look. Is that normal, and how do I change it? Um, it is normal, actually, but uh, you can change that by giving that bottle a really good shake before you use it. Ah. There is a little bit of flattening medium in that, or flattening agent in it, that's going to give it more of a matte look. Um, it is going to be a little bit shiny, but that will disappear when it's varnished. Ashfaltum gives it more earthy color. Yeah, it rounds it out, gives it a nice warm tone, too. I so... So that float just goes at the very bottom of those leaves. And that was matcha green for the base? Matcha green is the base and the shading color is plantation pine or sap green. I'm using sap green. Um, oh, something I wanted to tell you guys. Joe Sonia Fast Dry Glaze, if you're looking for it in Canada, Stockade does not carry it but Country Bear does. So if you're looking for it, go to Country Bear. It's Country Bear Woodcrafts um, or Creation Country Bear, either one. Uh, they do stock it on their website. I know because I just bought three bottles. <laughs> like Tracy Juice, I love this stuff. And I'm going to do the same thing to this one. She keeps pushing it away from herself. I know, I know, I'm sorry. It used to be the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> I used to pull it towards me. Now I keep pushing it away. So that little shadow down at the bottom, I know it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it does make a difference in the end. I love plantation pine, sap green. I love those two tones. They're great over these brighter greens. The fluid acrylic sap green is very transparent, which appeals to me a lot. And I also like the fact that it is a little bit darker. Um, but because the color is so strong, I have to thin it out quite a bit. So, Why are you using the black gold instead of the faux squirrel? Well, because it was the closest one. <laughs> That's all. I have far too many brushes and I could not find a, a 3 eighths angle in there in a faux squirrel. I had a, qu a quarter inch and a half inch, but I did not have the, the 3 eighths in there. So I have to restock my bin. So I grabbed a black gold. Just give you an idea of... Oh, you know, <laughs> don't even go there. There's so many brushes in this studio. There's that's all brushes. That's brushes. That's brushes. Never mind what's in the storeroom. Just never you mind what's in the storeroom. <laughs> I am a brush fiend. I do love my brushes. I, interestingly enough, over the years, um, I've collected a lot of brushes. Um, How can you have too many brushes? You can't. Besides, that's the rule. She who dies with the most brushes and books wins. That's how that goes. So, same thing for the, the piece with the white berries. Those leaves get the same treatment. That nice little shadow down at the bottom. Super easy. Don't putz with it too much. You I would, need to. I would love to see your storeroom. Really? <laughs> no. No, you don't. Right now, it's a mess. I'm in the process of reorganizing some things. It was yard sale season, so I had to get rid of a bunch of stuff. So, you know, we get rid of old toys, get new toys. <laughs> That's how that works. 
Oh, I did want to show them something really cool. Uh oh. The I showed them to you earlier, the colored pencil set that I got this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Where, where'd you put them? They're right here. Uh, I don't have to go far. Okay. I was just letting you know that you have a microphone attached to you. I do. Okay. And I have it with me. Okay. Okay. Okay, Trey, sandwich the mic, why don't you? There we go. Um, you guys know I have this ongoing obsession with colored pencils. And um, uh, Tombow. I'm going to adjust the camera so they can get a better <laughs> view of it. Are we still on this one? Yeah, still on the top down. So um, Tombow, I don't know if you're familiar with Tombow makes these beautiful watercolored pencils and markers. Um, this is a set of colored pencils from uh, Tombow. Check these out. They're packed like little books. And each one of these little sets and they've even they got them called volume one two and three four five and six seven eight and not i was just so tickled about one the packaging but what really got me excited was the pencils um they have them organized according to deep tones light tones but this this really got me so each of the different sets comes in this little book and uh, look at this is this not the cutest thing you have ever seen look it comes in its own little what looks like a journal and each color set comes that way and look at these these are the fluorescents they're absolutely amazing i cannot wait to play with these um these ones have this beautiful packaging but I was um, scribbling with one of them the other day and oh my gosh, they're just beautiful. The colors are so vivid. Okay, that doesn't want to go back in for me. Oh, because I had it going in the wrong way. There we go. Yeah. So yeah, so this is the entire set right there. And they had a, a great 40% off deal hmm. on these. So um, if go and check out Tombow.com because they've got some amazing products on there and they've got amazing um educational stuff on there but um i was really tickled with these these are active pencils are manufactured in vietnam and sold in japan the packaging is beautiful the colors are beautiful and the quality is incredible i was just so blown away by the quality and then i was playing with them on different types of paper and the colors are gorgeous they are a wax base so you can use these with um, just like your regular colored pencils they're absolutely gorgeous and they're available for mm -hmm. through tombow so this i was really excited this is my my newest acquisition is these beautiful colored pencils so no fluid acrylics aren't just for shading and highlighting no i adore my fluid acrylics um i haven't done a lot with them lately um because they had not been back in um uh, in production but deck word is working on that right now so i um i absolutely love my fluid acrylics i use them for all sorts of things um, the colors are vibrant the pigmentation is insane and you just can't beat them and a one little one ounce bottle lasts forever because these colors go such a long long way will you ever do a video using color pencils Ooh. Ooh, i don't know i would like to i think maybe yeah yeah, yeah. that's up to you it's i don't it's i don't know that it'd be something i teach because i'm still learning myself so yeah but um well you don't have to teach it you could just do something and chat with these mm -hmm. guys that's true we could yeah. you know we could do a we could just play let's all learn kind of yeah that's a great idea so i've got my shading all done and that's just that plantation pine so now we're going to put a highlight on and i'm doing that with a little bit of warm white again i've gone to my three eighths does michaels normally carry the fluid fluid acrylic no michaels does not unfortunately what, what? but there are i mean there's a number of places that you can get them so so there is a little too much moisture in there 
I'm using just a little bit of thinned warm white to put a highlight on the very tip of those leaves. And I'm letting that float come down so it just slightly overlaps with that shadow. So you want to come back and go right over top of that highlight at the tip and let that the color on the heel just slightly overlap. That darker green gives you a nice soft tone. Got mine from Maureen Baker. MaureenBaker.com is a great resource. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maureen actually is a de decor distributor, so she's got a lot of decor product. And her prices are very reasonable, and so is her shipping. She's very good. Is there a website for the Tombow pencils? I can't find anything. It's Tombow.com. You go to the top menu on their main web on their main website. Uh, what was the company? name of that uh, craft supply store in Toronto you were... Gwartzman's. It's not a craft supply. It's an art supply store. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, Gwartzman's. Um, they're a fixture. They've been around for a very long time in the city of Toronto. Um, but they've um, gone online. And um, I have ordered uh, paper and, and a few other supplies through them. And they're, one, their service was fantastic. Prices were what I expected. Not too high, not too, you know, too low. Service was great. Everything shipped within the week. I had it within three or four days. It was fantastic. This is live adjusting. Sorry. <laughs> He's just fixing up things. So again, I'm just floating a little of that warm white on the tips of the leaves. And I'm letting the heel of that float, so the lighter value of that float, overlap that darker green so that we get at that soft transition kind of gives them a, a frosted look so there is our leaves on naughty and i'm going to do the same thing to the leaves on nice so there's that little float again i'm not using colors full strength I blend them out well so that I don't have harsh floats. Uh, Michael's in my area does carry a fluid acrylic from, uh, another, golden. Yeah, from yeah. another manufacturer, double the cost of Decorts fluid acrylics. Yeah, oh yes. Wow. Yeah. And the the interesting thing is is the Decorts fluid acrylics has the same pigment load as the golden. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Golden does make it beautiful. I, um, Clicking the wrong button. So there's that white on the tips of those leaves. I like how this just gives it sort of a frosted look. And it kind of tones down that, that matcha green, because especially on the black, it's kind of bright. Is that still warm white or snow white? Uh, warm white. Warm white. I use warm white a lot. I very rarely use snow white. I use it for certain things, but warm white is my go-to. <laughs> yes, there is a bunch of tutorials throughout all of our lives on floating. Yeah. I took a class ages ago, can't see, but seem to have lost my float mojo. Your float mojo. You know what? Floating is one of those things, especially if you change brushes. Uh, one of the things, one of the reasons I've stuck with faux squirrel and black gold all of these years is quite simply um, from brush to brush they're consistent there's nothing worse than buying a brush that you really love and then the next one you get the consistency is not there it doesn't hold the same amount of water it doesn't flow the same it doesn't snap back to a chisel edge so I stick with what I know and what I know is that the both the black gold and the faux squirrel they're consistent from brush to brush so and that makes a big difference so if you've got having trouble with your floating have a look at your brush. It might be that it doesn't hold enough water or maybe it holds too much or maybe it splits or, uh, you know, if you're having trouble with your floats, especially if you've been doing this for a while, um, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a problem with your brush. Where so. in Canada can I get a stays on ink pad? Mm. Um, I had a supplier for that. I know at Michael's, they're very difficult to find right now. They're difficult to find, period. 
Who's the Negro? I'm, go I'm going to have to post uh, an address. I don't have, know it on the top of my t tip of my tongue, but um, I do have a couple of sources that um, I can find out. We'll post those on the on, on my Facebook page if you're looking for them. Yeah, it's well, that ink is an all natural ink, right? It's uh, no, it's permanent. The Japanese ink. Oh. Yeah. Fast drying solvent based ink. Uh, yeah. yeah. There we go. So now we're going to put in the stems. And this is where we're going to need that nice fine liner brush and lots of Josonias to thin that paint out. I want it to go on nice and smooth. Now I'm using a 15 aught extra long detail liner for this. And this is where I stroke in all of these little stems. There doesn't seem to be a shopping cart on the Tombow website. I uh, guess there is. Oh. I've stays spent far stays too much on money is on. at Hobby Lobby. Oh, there yeah. you go. Hobby Lobby is a good source. Yeah. If you have a Hobby Lobby. If you have a Hobby Lobby. We don't have Hobby Lobbies in Canada. We'll have metals and... And desserts. Private industries. Yeah. So I'm just using that base color, which is that matcha green, and a 50-knot liner, and I'm just stroking in... To connect all these leaves. <laughs> Need some black gold br angle brushes. Darn it. Black gold angle brushes. If you're in Canada, stockade.ca, they have them. And if you're in the U.S., um, there's a couple of places. Maureen Baker carries them. Uh, but the brushguys.com is uh, a oh, great it's... resource. It's TombowUSA.com. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks, Sandy. So, I'm going to dry this real quick. So, I got all my little branches on my nice. Now, I'm going to switch over to Minotti. Because this one's my favorite. Of course it is. <laughs> and, again, I'm using a 15 aught. This is a Dynasty Micron extra long detail liner. I, this is one of my favorite liners. Um, I also like the Dynasty Black Gold 15 Aunt liner as well. Uh, but I'm really loving these Microns these days. Look who gets a angled Jessica shader. Jessica Killerin is one, one of our prize packs this week. She's hanging out with her son right now. Yeah, so she didn't even know it's coming. Lucky for Nobody her. tell her. Lucky for her, I know her address. So yeah. Nobody <laughs> tell her. Nobody tell her. That'll be funny. Oh, I was going to tell you guys. I almost forgot. Those identipens. My girl Sandy's got a ton of them on her website. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So, you know what? Um, Sandy could use your business more than Amazon can. So. <laughs> And Sandy will take good care of you, I promise. So if you're looking for that Identa pen, check that out. Um, there's some awesome, awesome new stamps on Deb Antonick's site. She just got a bunch of stamps in. If you were looking for my grunge set, I do not have any left. Deb Antonick at paintingwithdeb.com has lots on her site. So if you're looking for that grunge set, um, go and get them there. Um, and I think Miss Sandy also has some. Susan. Kaltenbach. Kaltenbach. Jeez, didn't I just ship her a prize not too long ago? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you did. Well, see, that's what you get for being here every Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. And. There is our. Leaves all connected. You said three door prizes? Three, yeah. Three, okay. Third one's coming up. So Susan Kaltenbach, Jessica, Jessica Killerin, and... and... Tom Eaves. Carol Eaves. Carol Eaves, <laughs> yes. Right on. Carol, congratulations. 
Um, I think actually I have all of your shipping information, <laughs> <laughs> ladies. So don't worry about that. We will uh, take care of getting your goodies out to you this week. And as always, thank you so much. You guys are awesome for com coming every Saturday. We love it. All right, so we've got our berries done. We've got our leaves done. So now we got to concentrate on this lettering. Now, my base coat on this lettering, I've got one coat of warm white. Um, and I think that's going to do for this one. We're going to do nice. And I'm going to come back to that red alert that we used for the berries. We're going to paint in some stripes on our lettering about an eighth of an inch wide. It's just easier to be perfectly honest to freehand these little stripes in than it is to go back in and trace all of those little lines on. So I'm just stroking in that. I'm just using my 50 knot liner for this. You could use a zero rigger or a number. Yeah, I think a zero would probably do the trick. This is, I love this alphabet. I am working on doing an alphabet for you guys. Um, upper lower case in this uh, candy cane. Oh. Just because it's, it's fun for the holidays and it's an easy one to do for a variety of projects. Nobody tell Jessica that she won. Why? Just don't do it. Oh. <laughs> It'll what? be funny when she goes, uh, why'd you send me a brush and some stencils? <laughs> Oh, we sent that to the wrong person. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica's awesome. She's been, uh, we made her a moderator because she, you know, she's so helpful. She helps post links and whatnot. Just like a, my, my lovely Sandy. Yeah. Sandy is very, she's awesome. She's so good to me. Yeah, we got, uh, I think we got four, five moderators. Yep, four or five. Got and the Sheila, members group, Sandy, we've got Deb. Yeah. Oh, uh, Jessica. There's four. Yep. Um, Linda. Miss Linda. Linda Safranco. That's five. Yep. Did we make Karen a moderator? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's six. That's six moderators. Yep. And keeping you guys in line. Yep. <laughs> they, they they lay down the law. Oh, camera just freaked out for a second. Oh, maybe I bumped it. Oh, did you? I think so. No. My hair is out of control. So, so uh, this is just a super easy way to spark up some lettering. If your letter, especially for the holidays, just throw in some stripes, little red and white stripes in your lettering. Neatness doesn't really count for this. Because this is just fun. <laughs> no one can keep us in line. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're trying. Yeah. I am the one. I didn't even know. No, I am one. I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila, way to go. That's why your name has got a little blue wrench and a paintbrush beside it. Because yeah. you have powers. Yeah. Superhuman powers. Super moderator powers. Yeah. You can go, no, you're not talking anymore. You're in time out. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can actually ban people for not viewing the, the stream. Yeah. If they're not playing nice in the sandbox. Yeah, if they're not playing nice in the sandbox. <laughs> out they go. Out they go. <laughs> so I'm going to dry this real quick. And there's a couple of ways that we can finish off, like all these little details. But I'm going to show you two different ways to do this because they're both really cute. And they're really fun. Do the moderators have an eject button? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes they do. do. So if you get out of line, somebody's <laughs> going to sort you out. So I've got this lettering dry. And I'm not worrying about getting it fully opaque. We're talking about not even a quarter of an inch of width. By the time we put all these colors in, um, any little bobbles and wobbles and whatnot, are, you're not going to see them anyhow. So... We're going to start by shading this 
and we're going to shade them the same way we shaded the white berries. I'm going to use a little bit of that Bahama blue, or in this case, I'm using the fluid acrylic. Okay. And okay, it would help if I got enough paint in it to actually do something. Usually. Um, so I'm going to put a float of that Bahama blue down the left hand side, just like so. I tried to be nice. This is a nice sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, you know what? We don't have any issues. It's, this is um, a safe place for people to come and relax and just do something creative. Been watching over a year and I don't remember anyone ever being nasty. You have awesome followers. <laughs> I, I do. I do have awesome followers. Everybody plays nice in the sandbox. Everybody is kind. But that's one of my rules. You have to be kind. If you're not kind, yeah, got to be kind. You don't get to use the shovel in the sandbox. Yeah. So I've got a shading on the left side. And I'm going to dry that real quick because we're going to darken that little bit with a float of asphaltum just to tone it a little <laughs> whoops sandbox i thought it was an asylum <laughs> that too <laughs> it's also that it's just a name i use for my asylum <laughs> um what is this i missed what brush did you use for the lettering I, I used a number two rigger just to fill in those spaces and then i used a liner to paint in that red this is my first time catching the live class. Oh my goodness. Oh my. Somebody's been busy. Yeah. Did you go over the red with Bahama blue? I did. I will go over the red with Bahama blue, and then I'm going to go over the Bahama blue with a float of asphaltum. Dun, dun, dun. It's just going to tone that a little bit. Oh, man. It's 3 o'clock already. And I'm going to dry this, and we're almost done. Are we? We are. Okay. Just got a couple of things left to do. Oh, no. I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we're going to put a highlight on the right hand side. And I'm going to do that with that titanium white. <laughs> I, it's not too often that I use titanium white, but I did today. So I'm switched back to that quarter inch angled shader. And I've loaded it with titanium white. I'm going to blend it out really well because I don't want this to be full strength. And on the opposite side, I'm coming in from the edge just a little. I want to leave a little gap and I'm going to put a float of that titanium white. Leave that gap, that little space. I think I accidentally hit the unlike button. How do you unlike something? Don't do that. Uh, on YouTube, it's actually really easy to unlike something. Oh, is it? If you click. Can you undislike something? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You just click it again. Okay. And then there's my highlight going up the right side. So that gives us sort of that shiny look that we want on a candy cane. And then. I'm going to take my liner brush, and again, it's that 15 knot. I'm going to thin some of that titanium white out with a little bit of Joe Sonia. And I'm going to put a fully opaque line just slightly in from the edge of that float. All the way down. It's only 2 o'clock here. Yeah. yeah. Probably in Ontario? Oh, yeah, you are in Ontario. <laughs> So there's our highlight, and I'm just coming in slightly from the edge of that first float. There's our light impact point. Now, there's two ways that we can finish off this lettering, and you can do that with a little bit of thinned warm white. Put some of that on my brush here. And with that 50 knot liner, and you can do this. just. Add your paint, keep the lines thin, and stroke in those little extra lines on your lettering. However, if 
you find that you're a little shaky with the liner brush, like I seem to be today. Coffee. Yep. Did you um, have coffee today? or? I did. I had a cup of coffee this morning. Like um, high test? or? No, I don't do high test. So if you're finding that you're not getting a really great result with your liner brush, grab your opaque white pen. In this, you can finish off all of those little details on your lettering. Boom. Super easy. I love these opaque pens. Love, love, love. You do have to seal these ones. Yeah, you do have to seal it. So, which I do anyway, just out of habit. Um, I go to my spot in the garage and I hit all my painted pieces with couple of coats of uh, Decorts uh, matte spray. I'm going to dry this really fast and then we're going to talk about my favorite eraser because that's an important one but I need to make sure that ink is really dry before I do this. Okay I gotta go get changed. Yep. So I gotta make sure that that ink is nice and dry so it doesn't smear. We don't want that. Okay, so this is something that, I mean, I can't say enough good things about this. This is a Factus Black eraser. They're flippin', flippity awesome when it comes to removing um, graphite lines and whatnot from your painted pieces, particularly on a black background. This is super friendly to any surface. I've even removed colored pencil without damaging the paper using this. But on a painted surface, especially black, when you erase your graphite lines every once in a while, you'll notice using a regular eraser that you get a shiny spot where it's kind of polished the paint. And sometimes it doesn't get all of that graphite. And it drives me bananas when I see graphite lines on my painted pieces. It drives me nuts. Um, because it never looks finished. It never looks complete. It doesn't look clean. And I love my colors to pop. And I don't want to be distracted by all these little white lines on there. But look at this. I could aggressively remove all of those graphite lines using that eraser. I get nice clean look. It takes it all off, doesn't smear it, and most importantly, it does not damage my paint and it does not polish that black background. So I don't get any shiny spots. It I don't I really don't like that. Um, so that is how you finish off that lettering. I love this pen, it's fabulous because I'm, some days I'm just lazy and I don't want to use a liner brush. And that's one of them today. And I like that I can go back in and doodle in and, you know. The one thing I've discovered, it doesn't like that graphite paper I'm using. But there we go. So we get a nice crisp white finish. Gives me nice, nice lines, easy to control, and it finishes things really, really nicely. Look at that. Super easy. Love, love, love these pens. So that's it. This is my uh, Uniball Signo, uh, the fully opaque white pen. The other one that I use is this one. This is the Black Gel, which is the Uniball Signo DX, and it's a point. 3.8, which is super fine. I use those ones all the time. And then for tracing and transferring my designs on, um, I use the 0.38 in the red ink so that you can see what you're doing. And you can see where you've been, which makes a huge difference. So if you're looking for any of these, they are on my website. Love them. So there is nice, super easy to do. That lettering is, it's a fun way to embellish something, you know, to pop some wording onto things. It's a really easy way to do it. So to finish this out, the only thing we have left is to do a little bit of finish work on this. And I'm going to do that 
with my fugly brush. I got my fugly brush. Look at this. It's pitiful. But I love it. It's my favorite. So I'm going to get that nice and wet. And I finished getting all of the eraser gunk off of here. I'm going to get that nice and wet. And I'm going to thin out a little bit of warm white or titanium white, whatever you've got on the palette. For this part, it doesn't really matter which. And I'm going to just spatter this surface a little bit. Nice, fine spatter. Kumsa. I like it. I just think it gives it a nice wintry feel. And then I'm going to add a couple of little details to this. I have a thing about dip dots. It's it's a me thing. I just, I just like dip dots. Uh, but I find I like using them for filler and especially on something like this. So I'm going to put little clusters. Um, I want three. So one, two, three little dots. I like tucking them in near the berries. That little bit of white pops, makes that red stand out. So I've got one, two, three. And it kind of fills up the space a little bit. We could pop another set in here somewhere. It fills up the space a little bit, gives it a, a more full appearance without being super busy. And that appeals big time to me. Don't necessarily want everything busy. But it does finish that off quite nicely. And I think this one needs to be a bit, bit bigger. And then I've got one more step for this. And that is to add a little bit of a gold border. I like a little bit of a gold edge on the edges of these ornaments. And I'm going to do that with this pen. And I sort of get it right on the corner and then drag it right across and all the way around like so. Just so that I get a little bit of gold on the front of the ornament. Just like that. I like gold pens for finishing things. They can add nice little detail without being overbearing. And this just nicely finishes the edge. Gets it a nice little border all the way around the front. And so, have you still got your wheel up there? My wheel? Yeah. I do. There it is. You want to give it one more spin? One more spin. And um, the finished pieces for this naughty and nice set we're yeah. going to send out to. Ta da! Laura V. So, Laura, you're going to get the finished ornaments, this naughty and nice set. We're going to finish these out. We'll get them all varnished and signed for you, and these will go out to you. So that is our last giveaway. You're going to get that finished ornaments going to Laura V. So, Laura, if um, you go to the front page of my website, please click on the little speech bubble on the lower right-hand corner and uh, send us your shipping information, and we will get your finished ornaments out to you and i think that's about it next weekend uh, uh, close <laughs> there we go and switching camera <laughs> hopefully it's still in the, yep. aimed in the right direction yep okay guys next weekend i'm off for a romantic weekend getaway with my husband so we are not live uh, but we will have something special for you the following saturday uh, two new patterns being released on Monday. Uh, one is this one. They're calling it a mini vacay. It's a mini vacay. A staycation? A staycation? <laughs> no, that was called lockdown. Well, okay, that was a staycation. <laughs> All right. Um, so the pattern for this one, which is sweet tea and sweet peas, um, will be available on Monday on the website. Uh, plus, we have the fourth piece in the teacup series, the teacup and floral, and we did the sweet peas for that one as well. That one will also be up on Monday, um, the teacups and butterflies piece. 
that will be up on Monday as well. Um, we're fully loaded, fully stocked with stencils. We are fully stocked with uh, all sorts of stuff. I have more of the Victorian sign ornaments blanks. They are they should be here anytime, probably Monday or Tuesday. We do still have a few left in stock. So if you're looking for those ornaments for the class on the 28th, um, just keep checking the site. We will have more for you. And what else? I think I that's it. One. Lots of new stuff on the website. So if you don't mind, go and check it out. <laughs> we appreciate it. And uh, thanks again, as always, uh, you guys, for coming and spending an hour or two or three and playing in my sandbox. We do appreciate it. We love doing it. And we love that you keep coming back every week. And uh, so thanks for that. But in the meantime, though we aren't live next weekend, I'm going to say... Uh, Make sure you guys stay healthy, stay safe. We love you and we will see you again real soon.